contribution to make to the body of Jesus. I want you to see that the biblical people are here. And if you could learn to see the text through their eyes, you will see God face to face just in the experience of hearing the text. And if you can't weep a tear, in your heart at least, for a God who will take you back under any and all conditions because he loves you so deeply. Either I've been a poor rabbi, which is very possible, or you really don't know who God is. How many deep theological questions does Jesus answer by telling you a story and then say, now you figure it out. It would be great knowing who you are, and I'll keep complimenting you until I get to know you, <laughs> knowing who you are to find out how many faces that parable would have in this classroom. Because there are some of you who are the older brother who would exclude certain people from community for the sake of community. And in the process, you discover you don't have community either. Maybe we'd all tend in that direction. There are others of you who are going to say, I'm the son. And I haven't dared to go home because my community won't take me back. If the father takes you back, your community will take you back. Anyway, you get, you get my point. <coughs> First name. Mike. Mike. Mike A.L. Very yeah, good. And um, I've heard one of your lectures you talked about Pinchas. Um, is that kind of, you, you used a different word, I didn't know if it's the same thing, about uh, the adding part about the brother? If, if you wouldn't mind, Michael, if you wouldn't mind, I'll, I'd like to do the smicha. The smicha is like, if this is the foundation, the smicha is like the walls. With your permission? Okay. Um, <laughs> this is where the, where the folks are. That's the road from the Dead Sea to Jerusalem. And they are actually on the same road that King David would have walked. That's what the road looks like. Blows people's mind when you go to Israel the first time and you discover road isn't 40 feet wide and paved. That's Roman. That's the road. Thousands of people use that road every day. Now, I was going for a walk. That's what life's pathway is like, the Bible says. It's not going to be easy. It's going to be very tough. I had spent much of my believing life praying to God for an easier path. I don't like rocks in my path. I don't like dangerous places in my life. It's too tough. God, make my path easier. We were hiking here. I had a group of high school students. This is not far from Qumran, between Qumran and Engedi. And we wanted to go to the top. So we started up. It was, a, it was hotter than, man, it was hot. And uh, I don't remember if this is a trip you were on or not, Kent. Okay, is that your group? So I was going up the side of the hill, and all these students were with me. Well, they were slowly, definitely gaining on me because they're way beyond me in terms of endurance and athleticism. So I said, well, I'm going to sit here and meditate for a while. You guys go on ahead and see what you find. <laughs> I'm Greek too, you know. And um, they went on ahead, and they kicked up a whole herd of mountain goats, Ebex. You know the one that Habakkuk says, make my feet like the feet of a deer and those kings came down the side of this hill I mean they didn't know I was there I was sitting against the rock they came down the side of this hill a hundred miles an hour I'm exaggerating but boom 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 from rock little babies just like they had suction cups it was amazing and I was sitting behind a rock they came on both sides of me so I could have almost touched them and they ran on and it was like I was hit with a thunderbolt because for the first time in my life I understood the Eastern picture it's not God make my path easy it's God, give me the feet to handle the path you've picked. Because he's decided what your path is going to be. Now, he may choose to change it, but I find in my life far more often, he chooses to give me the feet that handle the path. And I don't think you would ever arrive at that from a Western point of view. I don't think you'll ever get there in my opinion. I think we need our Eastern brothers and sisters to show us, excuse me, to show us, I, I've had an interesting opportunity to share this with a, num a number of um, African folks. And the African folks, 
well, it's obvious to them. They think the same way the Easterner does. And so it may be someday that missionaries have to come back from Africa to begin to teach us Westerners the part, hear me, the piece of our tradition, our text, our heritage that we've lost. Um, I'm going to go to another program. So this would be a great place like for a three or four minute break or five minute break. Um, if you need facilities or whatever, you know far more about that than I. But it's going to take just a minute for that to boot up. So I would like to start again at 25-2. In fact, I will start again at 25-2. If no one's here, I'm going to talk to the wall. <laughs> Jewish people do that in Israel all the time. Well, bless God. Thank you. Oh, I Thank you. Thank you. A whole bunch of stuff. I'll give you some suggested resources okay. at the end today. Thank you, Tiffany. Hi, Catherine. Hi. I went on a trip through Israel and Greece and Turkey just in a semester over here. Cool. With? And you, um, Harding University. We just had okay. a program over there. And my professor used a lot of, I think, what they learned from the, the World May Know series. They're a lot of mm -hmm. kind of familiar to me. But you know the thing that I learned more than anything else in Israel? As I was searching for God among the rocks and the, and the place where Jesus walked with it, he doesn't live there anymore. Mm. That he lives among the people that I was with. You know, I was looking for him in the mm -hmm, mm -hmm. danger, and he wasn't there anymore. Mm -hmm. and, um, That's a cool insight. It was, it was an amazing lesson that they had sat down. Mm. By the Sea of Galilee, you'll want to show me yourself. And he was like, I already have. Yeah. That's good. That's good. Hello. Um, what is, can you tell me Jesus' name? Yahshua. Well, when we translated the Bible, they put it into the Greek form. Not, no, there's nobody in the world that would have ever called him Jesus. I bet you he never heard that once in his entire life except maybe Pilate. That's Greek. It's actually English out of Greek. It's not even Greek. Jesus would have been called Yeshu by the Galileans, Yeshua by the Judeans. Yeshu. Yeah, there's a, there's a dialect in, in Galilee that's slightly different. Um, for example, Elijah in Galilee, you'd say Eliyahu. In Judea, you'd say Eliyah. It's just a dialect. So Jesus would have been called Yeshu in, in Galilee. His parents would have called him Yeshu. I'm Chrissy. Um, I'm going to ask you? a question about Nicodemus because you said something about um, that they had had that long ago about the born again thing and he didn't understand him. Well, you picked up on the right thing. The text says, Jesus said to Nicodemus, you're, you're a teacher and you don't understand this. What that tells you is that Nicodemus did understand it, but that he wanted to take Jesus in a different direction. So Jesus says, you must be born again. And Nicodemus says, well, I know that. I've been I mean, this is what he's thinking. I've been taught that all my life. We say the Shema to be born again. But he wants Jesus to define that in a different way. So he says, what? I'm supposed to become a baby and go back into my mother? And Jesus says, Nicodemus, don't play these games with me. You know the teaching. You're a teacher of Israel. You have to become a new person. So in other words, it's not, that's, that's what drives me crazy. We all want to make the Nicodemus story that now there's a new way to be saved. Jesus' whole point is, no, Nicodemus, it's being born again, just like it's always been. And Nicodemus has got to be more than that. You know, you're a teacher. It's the same for you as it was for Moses. Believe in the Messiah. Okay. <laughs> uh, I have a question. Uh, in the Goliath story, you had said 6,000. I knew that was going to come up, too, and I forgot to mention it. Let me put it up here so I can say it to the whole class. Okay? It's a textual variant. If, if you go to the Masoretic text, if you go to the Dead Sea Scrolls text, you'll see it says 5,000. I mean, um, it says 5,000 in the text. You're, is that NIV, NRSV? Yeah, NASB. See, there it'll say, um, there it'll say 5,000 because it's from a different textual tradition. But if you look in any Jewish, English, or Hebrew Bible, you'll see they've taken the Dead Sea Scrolls as the superior document. The new NIV has 6,000 again. How are you? Great. Great. Well, Isn't that cool? It's such a different window. Yes. Do you just want to come home with us? Why don't you go to Turkey with us? Yeah, okay. I'll tell you about that at the end of the day. Wouldn't that be cool? Okay, let's get started, please. Nice, good question, Chris.